it's time to build your plant list. Here we are on the Natural Capital Plant Database. This is the search page I've already logged in. And we are going to do the first part of our plant list process, uh, finding all the plants that are suitable to this property based on our site assessment, based on the uh, soil types and the climate. So for example, we're going to be in zone 5. We know that the average pH is around 6.7, excuse me, 7.6 on here. Uh, we're not going to pick out any kind of functions or human uses at this point. We're not going to pick out full center shade. We want everything that we can find based on uh, the site conditions. We know that in this case there is no clay, but there is uh, a lot of sandy, silty loam soil in this area. So that's what we're going to go for on this, and we're not going to pick out anything else. So that gives us quite a big list. And all it's based on is the soil type, the climate or the growing zone, and the pH of the soil in general. And we can, we'll get more specific later. So here we have 294 plants in our search. Perennials, annuals, deciduous trees and shrubs, all of this. So that's a, that's a nice size list. That's a, a workable list for a property. So we're going to export this list now. And it will open up in Excel. We already have that open. Um, sometimes I get this message, but I've never seen that there is actually any data loss at this point. So here's what we have now is our plant list. There's just a generic export name. This is the CSV file. That's a, a standard file type. So that can be opened by spreadsheet software. By the way, this is best used in Microsoft Excel. Um, and also if you want if you use Dropbox, you can save it on Dropbox and use Excel online for that. It does not work in Apple Numbers as far as I as I know. Um, so now we're going to uh, format this and we're going to do this each time but this is our main plant list at this point. And we want to keep our titles here so we're going to boldface those. We're also uh, collecting the first two rows and then go up into window and we're going to freeze those panes so they don't move as we um, move around the page. So now with this this top line will always stay the same. Um, there's also another thing that we can do and that is to once we get these done is to paste them into a template that's already made. Um, we have that in the plant database and you can download that and in that case you would just select all these plants cut it and paste it into the plant template uh, format template that is on the plant database and they will automatically format all these uh, things will be centered things will be uh, sized correctly in the columns and all and that's just make it a little bit faster in doing that so once I have this list I'm going to uh, sort it and I sort it by plant type and I sort it by scientific name that gets all the plants and you have to select all of them Otherwise, you'll screw up the list quite majorly, and it won't be any worth. It won't be. You'll never fix that. So you select everything, sort it by plant type first, and then by scientific name. That way, all your annuals come together in one list, and all the deciduous trees, and then all the species that are similar come together too. So, Eleagnus are there. Potentilla is there. All these the brassicas are all grouped together. So that's why I do it by plant type and scientific name. Now you have all your plants together that way. Um, on our plant list here, you can see now also that we have our height and our spread. And that's great for when we're making symbols and we're sizing things in. You can center that if you want. It makes it a little bit easier to read. The plant ID number is not important at this point. Um, that's just for the database use and you can use that column for whatever you want or use that number system to keep track of, of your plants. So that's our first list. This is the plant list. Now we want to save this 
So we're going to go to File and Save As. And I'm going to call this, now these are all the downloads that we've done previously, by the way. Um, so we're going to call this what the search was. So this was a Zone 5 pH 7.5, did I say? Hopefully, I can go back and look. And in our case, sandy silt loam, and there is no clay. And that's how I'm going to name this file. That helps him remember. Now we could also say, give it a name like Jones, and then we know what property it was actually for. So we're going to save that. Now that is our plant list. All those plants are together um, in this. And let's go back to our plant database for step two. Now step two is we're going to back up and remember we have all this information still in here so that's really helpful all this information is still here I had 7.6 for the pH so I just want to remember that and now from this same list I just want to find out what the food plants are so I'm not going to change anything but I'm limiting now the list to the food plants so we submit our query on that and we have 147 of the 200 plus plants that are food plants now there's a lot of things in here that you may not know that are food plants. Uh, birch for uh, example, burdock, others. There are a lot of plants that actually have some food components in that and all of them are there. So we have 147 and we're going to export that list now too. Open it up in Microsoft. I keep getting that thing and we're going to try and fix that sometime. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. Uh, here we have our plant list now. Now in this case, what I want to show you is uh, the tab. So there's a tab here and there's also a tab on the other file at the bottom of that. So that's our main plant list. So in our first file, we're going to call that plant list because it is the main plant list. And then on the other file, I'm just going to call it food. And then what I can do is drag and drop that tab onto this one. I'm going to move it over this side of that. And now on one Excel file, I have my complete last plant list and now just the food plants. This makes it a lot easier to find just the food plants from this main plant list because we knocked off about 100 plants that. Uh, we're not using for that. Now step two. Let's go back to that list. Let's back up again on the browser. Turn off the food. We're always looking for nitrogen fixers, right? So let's see what nitrogen fixers we have. Turn off the food. Keep everything else the same. Submit the query. And we have 32 nitrogen fixers. We export that list. Don't worry about that uh, error message. Something's going on. We'll have to figure that out. So here are the nitrogen fixers in our original list. So now I can just call this nitrogen fixers, right? And I can drag that into here. So from our original plant list that we have, we can keep doing that. We just want to back up. Don't reset the filter, just back up. And now we can turn off nitrogen fixers. And we could even do another one where, you know, let's change the pH. Um, let's change something else. So if we're looking for essential oils, if we're looking for dynamic accumulators, things like that. You know what? Maybe I need a windbreak. And so I'm going to click off everything else and I'm going to look for windbreak trees from that list. And I have 28 windbreak plants. So I'm going to export that also. There we go. I'm going to call this windbreak. All right. And I'm going to drag that down onto this file here too. 
think. There we go. Now we have our food, our windbreak, and our plant list. All these are on one file now, all our tabs. And we know that if we want the entire list, we have that on the plant list. And then we have our food list, our nitrogen fixers, and our windbreak list. That's how we're going to create a really good working plant list for this property. So we have specific functions. Um, at one point, we would just do trees and shrubs and, and perennials, which is great. But what we're looking for is functions here. If I want to do another one that's just trees, I would go back to the plant list again, back up on my browser, turn off that function, and now I go to plant type and say, you know what, just give me all the deciduous trees. I want to see what those are. And again, I would submit the query. And I have 49 deciduous trees. I can do that with perennials, the grasses, all those things. I'm going to open that up in Microsoft Excel again. Yay. No error code this time. Call it trees. Drop it down into uh, our original file. There we go. And now we have all the trees from that list print uh, listed off in here. So this makes for a really nice plant list that we can use uh, to doing our symbols and working the rest of the way um, as we work on our design work. So we have our original plant list, our food plants, our nitrogen fixers, windbreak and trees, and any other selected plants out of that original list. Just don't change the parameters on that and you'll keep all of those original plants and now you're just taking plants out of that so you can work a little bit faster and not have to search for them.